Welcome. I like walking in the door, there's some furniture here. It's kind of like you're in my living room. Let's pretend that. Welcome, guys. Sold out show today. Which means you guys have raised just over $5,000 for Operation Smile. That's a lot of surgeries for kids who, and let me just, this, I learned this yesterday, and, it, and I have to say it again, because it resonates with me. There are children being born with a cleft palate so severe that they can't feed properly. That food will go in and come right back out. So these infants at, are losing weight from birth, and they're going to die of malnutrition unless something happens and, and they get help. I've never heard of this charity before Zach Levi, and I'm so grateful to be a part of this with you guys. And thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank God Zach Levi could not get a booth at Comic-Con. He came to me a little over three years ago and he said, I have this idea. Every year it's grown bigger and more amazing and more popular, I'm gonna say right now. I'm really proud to be a part of this. Part of my job right here today is to tell you guys, I do a little housekeeping, they call it, keeping in tune with the living room theme. <laughs> my duties include telling you photography, absolutely okay. Flash photography, not so much okay. <laughs> video, don't worry about taking video. We got some camera guys, my favorite guys, <laughs> taking care of that for you. Uh, when you have a question, just raise up your hand. We have some excellent staff on the side. They're gonna pass you a microphone. Once you have a microphone, Hold that baby up. Hey, you guys, how you doing? I know you. Good thing you got the good seat right in front of the pillar instead of behind, that's a crappy one. <laughs> Once you have a microphone, hold it up. That way the cast will know who to ask their questions to. And um, <laughs> it's pretty exciting today. I think you guys, I think you guys know why you're here. So without further ado, would you guys please welcome Doctor Who, Matt Smith, Jenna Coleman, and Stephen Moffat. Hi, guys. Hi. Here you are. Here we are. Thank you for. Oh, yeah. Look, someone's doing rocking the purple tweed. I've been like, please. Right on. Yeah, we're so thrilled to be here. We really are. This is my favorite panel. <laughs> um, I could go on. But more importantly, there are people here who have desperate questions, heart-burning desires. They need to know stuff about you. First me, though. Sure. <laughs> Doctor Who, not an unknown entity in your United Kingdom and the world over. Where were you when you first heard, hey, there's an opening? For who? All of you. <laughs> and where were you when you heard, you got it? Good question. Well, when I heard there was an opening, <clears throat> weirdly, my mum texted me saying, you should be the next doctor. And then my agent rang me and was like, do you want to audition for Doctor Who? And I was like, all right. And then I read the, um, the 11th hour, which was super secret. They give it to you like the night before. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Because um, I, I hadn't watched it. Um, and then uh, I did a couple of auditions with, the, well, actually I auditioned for Dr. Watson in Sherlock Holmes first. <laughs> um, and that's how I then, there became an open, the, you know, and then Moth thought, oh, maybe he could play the doctor. I think, something like that, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> And when I got the part, I was on a cobbled street in London. I'd just been in to an audition. I think it was for Fresh Meat. Have you ever seen that show, Fresh Meat? Anyway, there's a show. And um, <laughs> it's not Doctor Who. Um, and, um, and, um, and then I couldn't tell anyone for like four months. And then w I went round to Stephen's house and there were paper plates, Doctor Who plates. And he was like, do you want to play the Doctor? And I was like, yeah. 
Coleman. I, I've said this story quite a lot. I was, uh, All right. mine Blimey. is uh, not. Well, uh, I, uh, I was in um, Marks and Spencers, um, which is a supermarket in Britain. Um, and I was holding an avocado when I got the call. Was it ripe? I have no idea. I just didn't know what, I didn't know what to do. I had a phone in my hand, avocado in the other. I literally didn't know how to process it, so I just put them back and, and just walked out of the shop. And I remember... I, I walked, left my phone with the yeah, avocados. Yeah. No, I, I got my phone. Oh. But I, um, I'd come out of the house in a rush and I hadn't even put any socks on, so I went for a walk because I just had to walk and I got blisters on my feet. Yeah. I remember that. I did a lot of walking, actually. You just pace around and, and it's mm. so funny when you have that secret. Oh, and yeah. no one... Like, the paranoia is insane. Yeah. <laughs> you're always looking over your shoulder when you're on the phone and using all these code words and... Yeah, but it's quite empowering. Like, it's like a spy. And I did that thing where... You, you, uh, there, was, there, was, there was one... There's, there's an actress, I won't name her name, but you'd know her. And um, she's, she's, she's prone to that thing of going, so what are you doing next, knowing that she's got, like, James Bond coming up or something? Do you know what I mean? And I, and, and Ooh, it was really, who is it? Oh, I can't say. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it was really... Um, it was just really empowering, because I'd be like, nothing. And you're like... <laughs> nothing. nothing I've, got, I've got nothing to do. I'm just, I'm just going to see if I get a job and... And I knew uh, I had for the best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stephen, when did this fall into your hands? I can't sit back, by the way. Well, in 1963, I had this fantastic idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got offered the... Uh, when, when Russell uh, got offered Doctor Who, uh, and I'd heard about it, I emailed him to remind him of my email address, chiefly. Uh, but to say, uh, congratulations, uh, I think it's brilliant that you're doing it. And here, incidentally, is my email address, uh, should you be requiring it. And, uh, and, he, and he wrote straight back saying, look, if it goes to more than six, huh, um, uh, I'd like you to do some. So I, I thought, well, I hope that comes true. Then a few months later, uh, my agent phoned and said, would you like to do a two-part Doctor Who? And I abandoned all, all hope for my future career. Uh, and did it. And I remember saying to my wife, I want to do a Doctor Who, and she said, okay, but just the one. Uh, <laughs> so that worked out. Um, uh, and then uh, my Doctor Who's generally went down fairly well when I, when, when I did them once a year. And uh, uh, I was getting on a plane to go to Greece, and I got an email from Russell saying, a very, very long email, saying, here are the reasons you should take over Doctor Who, essentially. Um, and I spent months actually worrying about it because I already had quite a good job. I was doing Doctor Who now and then. And you'd come in and you'd wave at the crowd and they'll say, yes! And I'd say, yeah, here's another catchphrase. And they'd say, yes, it's exactly the same as your last one. I know! Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I'd go off again and, uh, and I'd just be terribly popular coming in once a year. And I thought, oh, once you take it over, uh, you'll, you'll never be as popular as that again. But you, you, you'll get to choose which monsters come back. So power appealed uh, and I took the job. But it did, I did worry about it for a long while because I knew it would be an awful lot of work. Uh, I was wrong. It's a buggering lot of work. <laughs> um, but that, that's it. It's a slightly less glamorous story than the other two, but what would you expect? Marks and Spencers. Well, okay, Marks and Spencers, but you did have a phone and an avocado, which... <laughs> and I have an impression of you trying to talk to the avocado as you walk away down the street. <laughs> How much are they offering? I can't hear you. Could you speak up? And saying, There's a girl talking to an avocado over there. <laughs> She'll be big, that one. Someone has a microphone out there. Who is it? Hold it up high. Stand up, young lady. I Hi. like your scarf. Hey. Hi. Are you a Doctor Who fan by any chance? <laughs> Just <laughs> wandered in. Uh, love you all. Uh, I'm a writer's assistant. I'm an aspiring writer. It's Stephen, you're one of my inspirations. And I was just wondering, how do you all do a writer's room or come up with a season? Do you sit with all the different writers who are writing episodes and sort of plan it out? Do they go off more on their own? How much do you, input do you have? There isn't much of a writer's room on Doctor Who because I think what's important about Doctor Who is that each show feels different. I, d I don't really want it to feel corporate and the same every week. I want each different writer's version of Doctor Who. And I was, what I always say to them is, treat it like you own it. It's the only way you can do Doctor Who, to d direct Doctor Who or to write Doctor Who or to play the parts in Doctor Who. Treat it like it's yours. Don't revere it. Own it. And the ones who succeed do that. They do their own version. A writer's room would play against that. 
So I don't want them to impersonate me. I don't want them to impersonate what they think Doctor Who is. I want them to go in and say, damn it, it's my show this week. So we don't have a writer's room, uh, but the writers often meet up just casually or socially, and I, I, I work with each of them uh, in succession. Um, and obviously, Mark Gatiss is more or less in and out my house all the time. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, like that, really. But it isn't... Uh, other shows would suit a writer's room far better than this one. I believe that's the way I think of it anyway. Cheers. Who's got another microphone out there? Someone there? Who? Over here? On this side? Please stand up. Don't be shy. Hi. Woo! <laughs> Oswin. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I want to say I love you guys, all of you. Um, my question is, I was wondering what it's like to see people like me dressed up like your characters on the show. It's amazing. I love it. I love the detail and the effort. Look at... Look at you have a whisk on your belt. <laughs> that kind of level of detail. And also, I've noticed Cyberman, yeah. Neil Gaiman's episode. It's just... It, it's, it's great. And, um, the cosplay is one of the best yeah. things. I love it. And also, like, who, who always has quite a strong strong kind of force here which I quite like there's a lot of doctors and Claras and and you know angels and stuff and we're like yeah go on who that's it <laughs> leave a print on comic-con <laughs> it's cool lovely who else has a microphone please hi hi I got to see you at least last year and I asked if Rose was coming back so when that announcement came out I was really excited <laughs> uh, <laughs> trust nothing I <laughs> I've learned, Moffat. <laughs> um, my question is not really Doctor Who related, but more, um, what's on your, your personal bucket lists? What's a, what's what's a bucket, bucket list? list? Like, what, you, what do you <laughs> That's fair. That's, that's your favorite, favorite bucket. It's question. an American colloquialism that Sorry. means something you want to do before you kick the bucket, meaning yes. die. Oh, so. Top of it. What do I want to do before I die? Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, dear. I'll Demand start. A second no opinion, pressure. I'd have thought. Yeah, <laughs> I'll start at Jennifer Lawrence. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, and then I think I think actually conquer uh, the idea of time travel. Which um, do you know Brian Cox, the scientist? Now he, I saw him not long ago, and he told me traveling forward in time is potentially an option. It's traveling back, which is hard. Well, how do you think you got here from this morning? Of course it is. <laughs> See, this is what I have to deal with. He's, he's, he's constant cleverness. Oh, Zachary! What's this? Oh, thanks, buddy. It's, it's Jennifer Lawrence already. <laughs> Zach Levi, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't know. What do you want to do before you die? You're nearly there, Moff. <laughs> See? Touché, touché. Uh, not as near as you are in the script I'm writing, dear heart. <laughs> I can't... I can't... What other back. things would you like to do before <laughs> you die? This is, this is also the thing, whenever I piss him off, there's constant threats of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you do this in the next episode. <laughs> I know, you actually have quite a lot of power. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, my bucket list, oh, I don't know. I think I've done most of the things I want, which presumably means I'm about to pop off. Um, I think I'd like to have more weekends off. Is that dull? Uh, I really wanted to go on the Oculus Rift, but I did that yesterday, so... Oh, God, I can't think of anything. Go into space or Go something. Go to space, yeah. Go yeah. to space for... for yeah, space. Space, yeah. Do that. I'd quite like to own a dog. Mm. <laughs> we, we want um, to share... I keep suggesting we do a Mark dog Gatiss share is phoning me right now. Answer, answer, answer it, answer it. Hello. <laughs> Mark, I'm in, a, I'm in a panel right now, and I've just told them that you're phoning me, so make it exciting. Come <laughs> on, speaker, yeah, go on. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh my God, really? Benedict's what? <laughs> With Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> well, that was quick work. <laughs> yeah, listen, mate, I, I, I better ring off because we're bound to say something wrong, aren't we? 
<laughs> I just thought it'd be fun. I, I thought it'd be fun to answer you while I was here, but I'll, I better go, man. I'll phone you. I'll phone you as soon as I'm as I'm out. <laughs> okay. See you, bye. Nice. <laughs> Who has the microphone now? Where are we? Who are we? Hold it up. Hold it up. Don't be shy. Lovely. Come on over here. No, stay there. Stay there. <laughs> stay there. Talk into that. Go. <laughs> Hi there, my question's for Jenna. Um, are you kind of bummed your whole Impossible Girl story's over, or do you kind of know what's planned for you next? And Stephen, what do you think you're gonna do next? So there. <laughs> well, I thought what I'd do next was keep a few more secrets from you <laughs> about what I'm going to do next. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I, she's still the Impossible Girl. She'll carry on to be that, I think. Um, but, and and um, no, I have no idea. Uh, what is next? None of us. None of us. None do. of us do. Apart from gonna die, Matt. In man. his head. <laughs> another one who's got another microphone. Over toward. Hey. Stand, please. Hi. What's your name? Hey. What's your name? He's scary. Sydney. I know. <laughs> Sydney, like the country. The country, like the city. <laughs> It's, it, I had a late night at Nerd HQ. <laughs> Sydney, what's your question? No? She wanted to know why you are leaving. Ah. Uh, well. <laughs> I love the easy Look questions. What you've done. Look what you've done to that oh, no. girl. And she wanted to let you know that you were her favorite doctor. Oh, thanks, Sydney. Thanks, dude. Well, what we'll do is, well, let's have a picture afterwards. Should we do that, Sydney? Yeah, let's do that. And um, it's hard to leave. It's an awful thing to contemplate. It really is. And you know, it's been the most, just the most incredible experience. And things like this and comic, it's just, it's changed my life. And uh, it's really depressing. But um, <laughs> you've got to. I don't know. I think you've got to go when you've got to go. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I've made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, and Sydney can't even look at you with that hair. I know. All right. <laughs> when she turns 16, she's going to say, I should have looked at him more. <laughs> Who's got the next microphone? Please stand up. Hi, this question's for Matt. I was Hi. just wondering, of course, we're all very sad you're leaving. Um, I was just wondering what your future career aspirations were. Is there a specific character type that you were hoping to get to play in the future? Oh, gosh, I mean, I just, I just sort of hope to, to keep doing good work, really. I'd quite like to do a play. Um, I, might, I might come and live in the States for a bit and, you know, hang out here. And, um, I don't know, though, really. I mean, it's... it's and, you know, I'm, I, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> I've got another one to shoot, which, which is going to be, uh, sounds incredible. Moss has been telling us about it this morning, actually. So I don't know, really. Just, just keep trying to do great work. But I've been very fortunate. I'd love to work with Stephen again. Um, not so much Jenna. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would, you know, and, and uh, I don't know, just keep, keep doing good work. But, you know, this part is going to be impossible to top. It's, it's, it's an extraordinary thing in your life, so. I don't know. I'll probably be doing like rep in Hull. That doesn't that <laughs> that doesn't land here, does it? Hull is a place in London that you wouldn't really want to go and spend in London. In what's wrong with me today in England? <laughs> I'm going to talk less. <laughs> Jenna, do you have any plans for after Doctor Who? Um, uh, um, no, I, I'm I'm here for uh, season eight. Very nice. So, uh, Very nice. Who has the next microphone? Someone over lovely. Hello. Um, this question is for all of you. What is the most surprising thing to come out of being part of the Doctor Who universe? Uh, just, it's everywhere. Mm. Yeah. I think, and just the different, the amounts of different people, the different ages, and everybody who has a story about it. I was in Heathrow Airport on the way over here, and there was two people sat in front of me, like, there, and they had no idea that I was sat there, and they were making TARDISes. Yeah. They were literally, the two, they had these, these cardboard cutouts, and they were making TARDISes and having a conversation and comparing the TARDISes. And I sat there for about 15 minutes and watched them both. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just all these 
things all of the time. And also the sets, just going on set every day and you're in a completely different world week to week. Yeah, and traveling together. And it's like sort of the closest we'll ever be to being in a band. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and um, yeah, and the fans are sort of like just extraordinary. I mean, it's everywhere you go in the world, there's someone who sort of watches Doctor Who and that's always quite surprising. It's, it's um, yeah, just the journey, the sort of journey that you go on. It's, it's fantastic. I think for me, just the mere idea that I sit in a place like this and anyone has the faintest idea who I am, I find that <laughs> uh, very strange. I mean, not, I mean, it's sometimes odd, to be honest, because you, you don't become a writer in order for people to know who you are, especially if you're very, very shy, as honestly, I really, really am. Um, so I, I find being stopped in the street occasionally. Um, I, 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 uh, my, my wife used to say, you, every time someone stops you, you look like you're being arrested. <laughs> You have to understand that's going to happen to you. It's not, I'm so, oh, I'm sorry, what have I done, what have I done, what have I done? Um, so that, I suppose, uh, yeah. is the oddest thing. Stephen, you said earlier, uh, don't revere it to your writers, uh, own it. Do you guys feel a sense of responsibility to this cultural phenomenon? Yes, because these people get angry if we get it wrong. <laughs> They care, and, that, and that's the great thing about who I think, is that, you know, it does divide opinion. And to some people, you know, some people don't like me as the doctor. Some people like Tennant or Eccleston or, or, or Troughton or whoever. And that's the great thing is that you can, it, it does divide opinion and it, and it does sort of create debate and people have their favorites and all that. And I kind of like all that stuff, you know. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk I mean, I mean, responsibility <laughs> sort of makes it feel, uh, uh, slightly dull or, or onerous yeah. in a way. It's it's uh, it's an honour to get your go. I mean, I say you treat it like you own it, uh, specifically because you don't. You don't really own it at all. Uh, uh, you 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 spend some time with it. You you give it your all, and then you leave, and it sheds you like a scale. You know, you're just gone. Doctor Who will go on perfectly well without all of us. That's the truth. Um, so it's just an honour, uh, yeah. an incredibly exciting honour yeah. to get your go at something like this, to have your tiny little sliver of a contribution yeah. to something uh, that is so special to many people, including me, who grew up with it. It's a, I, I think, it, you, you know, especially when I got the job. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. Hi, Zach. What is this? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, who are these seats made for? My feet can't touch the floor. That's better. Thank you. Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> About uh, a sense of responsibility. Oh, that was it. But basically, I think the moment we're let on set and you get to do all the wonderful things that our job lets us do and go to all these different places and tell the stories that we get, it's just, it's more fun. And mm. you, you know, you, you feel that, but you can't help but enjoy it along the way. Yeah. It's just a mad adventure. And it's, it's quite strange for me and you as well because you, you joined the show, obviously, and I'd, I'd, I'd been coming to these sorts of things and doing all the Who stuff that you get to do, and we're like, we just did a prom in the Albert Hall. Oh, yeah. And so I'd, be, I'd say stuff like, wait for this bit, or wait for this bit. There's so many great big events that you get to uh, We sat there, of. we snuck around, um, so we were in the Royal Albert Hall in yeah. the huge orchestra, and we were sneaking around the theatre in the dress rehearsal, and we sat and we watched, mm. and we saw all these clips on the screen and the whole orchestra playing, and we're it's like, how? It was it really moved moving. Us, it? it did, it moved us. Yeah. And we were like, how many TV shows can do this. N not many. Although they wouldn't, so they wouldn't let us in, would they? Oh yeah, no, and they we were wouldn't like, let us in. <laughs> the lady wouldn't let us in to watch and we were like, we are in the show. <laughs> and she was a bit like, she just, it was like we were aliens. I think it's your hair. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, I, like, there's, there's, um, we just wound down the window in the car because we <laughs> saw like a Clara and a doctor. And we were like, hey, doctor, what's up, man? He was like, yeah. <laughs> And then we drove off, and the Clara tapped him on the shoulder and was like, and he was like, <laughs> Literally, he couldn't have been more disinterested, could he? Oh, he's like. <laughs> Who's got a microphone out there? Please stand up. All right, my, my question's for Matt and Moffat. Um, I've always assumed, um, well, I know that the 11, your doctor is like the baby of all the doctors. Not only are you the youngest to play him, but I always assumed it was because what Ten went through is why he acts like this. Was that something you intentionally put into the character, and was that something you wrote into the character? 
What the the that he's youthful. That yeah, that he's like the baby of the the do all the doctors. That right, he's well. the oldest but the youngest. Yeah. Um. Well, to be to be really honest with you, I've I've always tried to sort of embrace the, the age of him, you know, because I look relatively young. I mean, I've aged savagely. <laughs> Don't think I'm opening the floor to you on this one, Moth, because I get it in the neck a lot. Oh, wrinkles. Um, and um, so. Yeah, I've always, I've always sort of tried to explore just the thousand yearsness of him because what, what, what really intrigues me about the character is that if you think of all the blood on his hands over the centuries, over the years, all the races, all the empires that he's had to watch burn or slip away or, 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 or crush or all the companions that he's lost. And that's, that's why I think he, he, he dances around the world with a smile because if he didn't, it, it would all become too much and it's... Um, yeah, he's, uh, yeah. So, and uh, in terms of being youthful, I, I mean, I've never really consciously tried to make him young. Sort of the opposite. So I don't know if that's if I failed or succeeded. <laughs> the apparent age of the Doctor is sort of almost meaningless, isn't it? I mean, he's he's a thousand years old. He's over a thousand, and hardly any actors are available of that age. <laughs> um, <laughs> and his apparent age has, uh, has ranged from 20s to 70s. Um, so it doesn't, it sort of doesn't mean anything. I think the main thing about the Doctor is he, he uh, as Matt says, he rushes forward all the time and does not look back. Because if he started looking back, the sheer length of his memories would mean he'd stand and stare all day and probably cry. So he just, he keeps barreling forward, onwards, onwards, onwards. He can't afford to think of all the people he's missing because um, he'd have to give them five minutes each and it would take forever. You know, it's, uh, I, I, so I don't think one doctor is a response to another doctor, as it were. It's all the same man, and the same man moving forward as fast as he can, I think. That sounds terribly sad. Mainly he's got a space-time machine, and he doesn't want to be too morose so much of the time, would you? If you had a space-time machine, you wouldn't sit around and think about the past. You'd just go and visit. <laughs> <laughs> the mic is over here somewhere, over here. Where is it? Who's got the mic? Lovely. Hey. Out of all the ep episodes that you've been in, what was your favorite episode and or creature? Good question, man. Um, for me, I think it's probably the 11th hour um, because it, it, it sort of held such a special place and it was a, a big journey for me. And, um, and I, I love the angels, the weeping angels. I think they're, they're one of the best and of our time together. I'd say, I don't know, what would be your I, favorite? I like, um, I like Asylum. Yeah, Asylum's Love great. Love Asylum, and also uh, the Snowman, just for me personally. Yeah, is, yeah, uh, because again, because there was such a journey to it for yeah. for, for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite? Oh, no. <laughs> That's <Moff>? fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's yours, Moff? Oh, um, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 had, I went through such pain trying to get the name of the doctor right the, uh, the moment the fact it came out rather well yeah. uh, i mean I'm, I'm very very pleased with that one so i'm yeah. really thrilled you know, because i felt that there were times i wasn't going to nail that at all and it was so difficult it was difficult from start to finish that one i mean the, the 11th hour still holds a special place because it brings off something incredibly difficult i i watched um uh, recently, Vampires of Venice and loved it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'd forgotten it. I just thought, well, oh, she's brilliant. It's good, yeah. <laughs> they, should, they should bring this back, I thought. Arthur's um, on really good form uh, in that. And the, sorry? Old uh, Rory Pond's on good form in that. Yeah, I know, he's very, very sort of funny. Flailing around in his, yeah. in his early days when he was really sort of stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Doctor uh, just be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> But loved him. And I watched Asylum again recently, for, and, and I thought... That's that, a belter, I think. Yeah. a really Asylum. good one. That really cracks along. Great score yeah. to Asylum as yeah. well. Yeah, it's a brilliant score. Murray did a good job. Oh, I just kind of like all of them. Yeah. Terrible, but I do. Vincent and the Doctor, that's a beautiful that's episode. That's a great episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Pandorica opens. Pandorica is fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's... We're just going to keep listing. <laughs> We're just going to keep listing episodes. Yeah. I'll just list them all. I better stop. <laughs> There was a, right, perfect, nice timing. Um, first, I just, I'm asking Stephen to be gentle with us when the final moment comes, because I'm still suffering from when David said, I don't want to go, added. <laughs> so whatever you do, be a little gentle, but you mentioned earlier how Russell had contacted you about taking over 
the job. And so many years from now, when it's your turn, how much say do you have in Neil Gaiman, I mean, or whoever, getting the job next? <laughs> Well, Neil has been very specific that he doesn't want it. Uh, um, none at all, and, and neither, did, neither did Russell have any say in it, really. Um, uh, he was just trying to persuade me that I should where I offered it. Um, so uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not in my gift. I, 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 it's BBC's choice. They would ask me because I'm there, but uh, it, it wouldn't necessarily be my choice at all. So not much say. And as for being gentle, why? <laughs> Well, it's drama. It's yeah. meant to make you react. If, when you watch a comedy, you want to say, could you not make it so funny this week? <laughs> I'm, I'm really tired from laughing last week. <laughs> no, he's got, he's got to be moving and emotional. He's going to make it hurt. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, I think the great thing about uh, Doctor Who is I think, I don't want to go, and then he's pratting around complaining about his chin a moment later. <laughs> and if I'd been Bernard Cribbins in that little uh, thing, I'd be saying, Doctor, I'm actually going to die. You're going to get a bit younger and stupider hair, OK? <laughs> Between the two of us, you can let me out and you can get a refit, all right? <laughs> you selfish bastard. <laughs> Was it right here? Perfect. Hello, everyone. Hey. hey. Matt, I have thoroughly enjoyed your time. It's Thank you very much. to see you go. I'm looking forward to seeing you interact with David in the special. Yeah, that's fun, actually. Wonderful. Jenna, I look forward to seeing more of you in the future. You're a wonderful companion. Thank you. Nathan, while you're here, thank you for being Hal Jordan. I'm also an excellent <laughs> companion. <laughs> but Stephen, when do we get to see the TARDIS uh, appear in front of 221 Baker Street? Well, you can't, can you? <laughs> no? Because, because Sherlock Holmes is a fictional character in... Uh, in Doctor Who's universe. <laughs> I mean, he can't, can he? He right. just can't. And what would happen? What That's would up happen? to you. You're in charge of both shows. Yeah, but... <laughs> no. It would just be a horrible competition between two egomaniacs with Jake Bar. <laughs> On right? and, and off And it would screen. get nothing oh. done. <laughs> At the very least, I'd... Oh, you sure like... Oh, look at you, you scholar. I've got something... Oh, that was fantastic. I mean, at the very least, I'd love to see Benedict, Benedict on yeah, Who. You know. I think everyone agrees with me. I'd love to see Benedict on Who, if possible. In a guest role. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think my life is maybe complicated enough? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. There was a question over... Who's got the mic? Hi. Hi. Uh, love the show and that it can change and we can be sad and yet be excited at the same time. Uh, my question's for Matt. I want to know, now that you've been the doctor, what advice would you give the next person who plays a doctor, and how does it compare to the advice you were given when you came into the role? Well, to be um, honest with you, I won't give him any advice. I'll just wish him luck and say, have the best time, because that wh whoever they get, he or she, I don't know what the deal is. Only, I think, Moff knows. But, but um, whoever they get to play the part will be brilliant. And uh, it will be a brilliant, brilliant actor. And they'll have their take and their spin. And I'll just wish them luck, which is kind of what David did to me, really. And I mean, there are a few bits you can say, but it's kind of like Hamlet. It, 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 it has to purely be your version of that part. And um, Pretend it's me and just tell me. <laughs> Ooh, Nathan, <laughs> you're going to have the best time. Please don't be better than me. <laughs> take care of... Jenna Louise Coleman, and um, you know, and I'd say I just advise you what flat to get in Wales and stuff like that. It'd be really practical. Come round for a cup of tea. Best restaurant. Yeah, that's what I'll say. I'll just wish him luck or her luck, you know. And uh, yeah, on you go. Very nice. We have a question over here. Who is the mic? Please. I love your outfit. Hey, doctor. Totally original. I just wore this today. So. Um, <laughs> My question is actually for Jenna. You've been on the show a relatively short amount of time. How do you feel about being the veteran in season eight? Oh, I've not thought of it like that. I'm going to be a veteran. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it, it's, it's just very mixed, mixed feelings. But I suppose, in a way, like we've said, it's not, it's not over yet. It's, uh, we've still got a lot more to film, and uh, we haven't said our goodbyes yet. So I've, I've not really got that far ahead. Um, 
But it will be, it will be interesting not being uh, the newbie yeah, it's around. Yeah, exciting, I think. And we're going to have the best time on the Christmas special. We're, we're determined to make it the best episode ever, you know, yeah. and, and uh, there's a lot to do. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on page 22. It's getting closer. <laughs> Absolutely no sensitivity at all. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Please, sir. Hi. Uh, my question is actually for Stephen. Um, love the library dual episode. Are we ever going to see the other end of that where the doctor says goodbye to River? Um, you mean uh, when, he, when he goes to uh, uh, Derillium and all that? Um, well... I've always felt that there were certain things between the Doctor and River w that we should never see. <laughs> I can think of a few right now. Um, so I don't know. I mean, he sort of said his goodbye, uh, and she's uh, uh, in, uh, in the name of the Doctor. There's always the possibility, because it's always out of sequence, that you can do anything you like with that. Um, but I remember it's, it's a tough one. Because <laughs> I remember I wrote some uh, extra scenes for one of the DVDs, uh, and all that we had available for, were, were Alex and Matt. So I had to write scenes in the Doctor and River alone in the TARDIS. And I remember thinking, oh, dear God, that's the situation I always try and avoid. <laughs> for obvious reasons. What, what does that woman do to him the moment the door is shut? <laughs> 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 so... <laughs> I remember, uh, so what, 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 what were they doing that night at Derillion? There are some things, surely, the Time Lord must keep to himself. Having a good but time. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there is, the implication is that she's met many more doctors than just the two of them, so it's, it's always possible. But I quite like the, the goodbye in the name of the doctor. And I think there should always be stuff that we never saw, and I don't just mean all that filth. I mean, there's a, there, there, you know, they, they, they go off and they do stuff, and we don't ever know about it. You know, I think it's slightly better that way. We have time for one more question. Ooh. Whose question is it? Who's got the microphone? Nah. Please stand up. Hi. Hi. Um, my question was just that when you had Amy and Rory uh, along, uh, you had quite a good catchphrase and come along pawns. So, and then with Jenna was the one who got it this season with uh, Run You Clever Boy and Remember. So I was just wondering um, if that was on purpose, Moffat or um, Matt, did you miss having a catchphrase to say to your companion as you grab her hand and run away? <laughs> well, I love this. Matt, Jenna, Moffat. Yeah. <laughs> He's the Moff. I have a first name. No, he doesn't. It is generally speaking what people call me. No, it's not. I never call you Stephen. I know you don't, and you bloody started it. Yeah. <laughs> However, off. to get round this, because Jenna's dropped her middle name, yeah. I've decided to steal part of that and use agenda, <laughs> and I am dropping part of my name. And I will now be Stephen Fat. <laughs> Guess how you're going to remember that. Now, um, uh, sorry, what was the question? Uh, Catchphrases. 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 Um, oh, God, you know, I, I'm always telling people, oh, don't write catchphrases. Then I seem to do nothing else. <laughs> it's, the, it's the mark of a bad writer, so I'm right about that. Uh, it's not, it's, I mean, the, the, the run, you clever boy, wasn't really a catchphrase. It was, you know, something that was repe uh, sort of meme repeating through the various Claras. Uh, Come Along Pond wasn't invented by me at all. It was invented by Matt. Um, uh, and it was actually, because he used, uh, and probably still does, call Karen Pond. Uh, all the time, uh, yeah. and uh, and on the day that we we were shooting the, uh, uh, the, the uh, photographing your outfit for the very first time, yeah, uh, and you were moving over to get photographs. So the very first shots of you in costume, you turned to Karen and said, "Come along, pond." Yeah, and I thought, "Oh, I'm having that." Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, good catchphrases, if there is such a thing, just sort of happen. Um, yeah. They don't, I mean, bow ties are cool was just because I was thinking, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? He's wearing a bow tie. <laughs> um, and and that sort of worked. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And Geronimo was just in desperation because I'd written the last page of Russell's script and thinking, I've got to have something at the end. And then, uh, then Matt started throwing Geronimo into every second episode. So, <laughs> so, so it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's Moffat's uh, fault. Oh. Uh, 
Hi. Hi. I, I have a question. Hi. <laughs> hi. How's actually, it going? Yeah. Oh, hi. Oh, wow. That was weird. Uh, uh, actually, I, I don't have a question, but we have time for one more question. So would you guys want to ask one more question? Yeah. That was so incredibly crappy of an answer right there. <laughs> if you had time for one more question to ask these three amazing people, would you want to ask it? See, that's so much better. All right, who's got it? Right there, right in the back. Great, last question, okay. Um, Steven, uh, big fan for 30 years, thank you. Um, since a doctor can travel through time and space, what's the possibility of him ever running into any brown coats? <laughs> well. He's not very good at precision time travel, and that show didn't run very long. <laughs> oh, Muppet is That's fire. fair. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Just in case you don't think so, actually, I love that show. I really do love that show. And when I uh, when I handed in, I think the Wedding of River Song, uh, uh, and I had got it finished, not in time, but not so far after the time that was a real emergency uh, that, uh, that Marcus Wilson didn't want to kill me. So he, he bought me the box set of, uh, of the show so that I could go and watch it. And I loved it. So I, 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 do, I do think it's a fantastic show. It is the traditional gift of, you just about made it. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, Matt, Stephen Fat. Oh, That's gonna no. stay. Especially That's Jenna. Gonna stay. Thank you very much, you guys. You guys want to stick around? You want to just stand here real quick and just so people can snap a few photos of you guys? Yeah, just stand right there in the middle. And listen, I just want to say as well, you know, Nerd HQ is a great thing. It really is a, a, um, a thing that brings people together and it's, uh, this is always the most fun, so... Big up to the Nerd HQ, man. Nicely done. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, guys. All right, folks, stay seated. Our ushers will have you uh, stand up a line at a time. What I tell every audience is if there's a fire, I'll throw a chair right through this window. <laughs> you follow me. <laughs> have a great day. <laughs>